live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's the Q covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host John Troyer, and this is theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2017 in Boston. Happy to welcome back to the program Jim Whitehurst, CEO of Red Hat. Jim, second week in Boston. Uh, you know, you yep. guys had your big show uh, just down the road at the in the Seaport Convention Center, and, and now we're here at the at the Heinz. Uh, thanks so much for joining us again. Hey, it's great to be back. I feel like I'm getting to see every week now. That's great. Yeah. So, Jim, I was expecting you to walk up on stage and say Red Hat has just absorbed all of OpenStack. Next year, <laughs> we'll merge the two communities because, you know, Linux's containers, open source is Red Hat, you know, we're all big one happy family, so welcome aboard. Tell, tell us what your, your, your message is. <laughs> well, no, yeah. look, I mean, first of all, my key message uh, today is very much the thing that excites us so much about OpenStack is that there is such a large, vibrant community. And sure, we, you know, have competitors and for um, offering an enterprise distribution, that's part of what we do, but the fact that it's such a big tent, and if you just looked at the keynotes today, you had a lot of, you know, well, this web scale customers, you had academia, you had traditional enterprise. Um, I think you just see the size of that uh, community and the diversity of interests and expertise is what makes it so uh, rich. So, yeah, while well, we love to sell OpenStack, I'm glad that OpenStack is dramatically bigger than Red Hat. Yeah, so, you know, a few years ago, I remember everybody used the Linux analogy when you looked at OpenStack. There were all these distributions and Many of those have gone by the wayside. If I look at what we have today, obviously you, you guys are you know a leader in the space. You've got a lot of customers. Would love to hear some details on that. But there's everybody else is kind of it's managed, hosted, packaged. Um, it doesn't seem like there's that many offerings that are just purely a distribution. What do you see? You know, what's the opportunity for you guys? What what do you see out there? And you know, did the Linux analogy just fall short? Was oversimplified? You well, know? I think it was a little bit oversimplified. Um, OpenStack, you know, obviously has to deal with a lot more heterogeneity in terms of environment and how people are using it than an operating system which obviously works in a lot of environments but it's a kind of a more concrete kind of thing in a category that's been established for decades, right? Um, but, you know, with that said, um, I, you know, when you look at kind of where and how it fits, um, uh, you know, kind of in our ecosystem, um, I think you will see distributions, but the distributions are likely to be Linux vendors because it is tightly tied to Linux, and so I think you still see Ubuntu, SLES, and, and, and Red Hat still talking about software distributions. I think you know Marantis um, and you know Boris in his keynote today talked a lot about you have to have an opinionated stack, and those pieces you know may come from other uh, places or you know you, can, you know manage service type offerings out there, and so I think both of those will will work for different kind of contexts uh, out there. Um, it's just it's because of the nature of the software in the less defined category. Of course, you're going to get different business models, but I do think you are kind of sussing out to the core Linux distributors as the kind of the software providers and then a set of other players who are offering more managed service. Well, Jim, Red Hat is one of the main players in two of the most interesting emerging camps in cloud right now, right? Containers and, and things like OpenStack sure. and private, private, public, hybrid cloud. Um, you just had, your, just had your Red Hat Summit last week, this week OpenStack Summit. Everybody's trying to figure out how the pieces fit together. In fact, Kubernetes, the word Kubernetes was said a lot uh, in the keynote this morning. How are you looking at how all these different pieces fit together and, you know, in, and the flavors of clouds and cloud services that are going to be coming out in the next few years? So, uh, yeah, at least for Red Hat, and how much of this is because this is how we've architected our products versus how, how, how this ultimately unrolls over the next few years, has a pretty strong point of view now where OpenStack manages resources, so whether it's compute, network, storage, resources, and Kubernetes, and our, uh, we're the, second largest contributor to the Kubernetes project behind uh, Google, and our enterprise Kubernetes product goes under the brand name OpenShift. And when we go out and sell OpenShift, it's about managing containers, which are application components of applications, microservices. You know, so when we think about the container platform, we go sell OpenShift, it's all about how you manage applications, right? Now, after we sell that, we then have another conversation, which is, what do you run, run that on OpenStack, or on you know, vSphere, or on Amazon? 
but that's a separate conversation. And we obviously work hard to make sure it lands on OpenStack. But again, that's a, a different conversation than I think of, of, of Kubernetes being more thinking about managing the applications and OpenStack managing the resources. And we find that works actually quite well. Jim, I had a great conversation with, with Radesh uh, towards the end of Red Hat Summit. Walk through, I think you said 500 customers in production with OpenStack worldwide. Um, trying to squint at a little bit, you know, where that fits financially. You know, obviously it's, it's a big strategic push, but you know, when, when, when you think financially, how much is OpenStack a critical piece? Any numbers you can share or how, how, how that works? Yeah, out? well we said we yeah. have 500 customers. Yeah. Like, since the size, these deals are getting big. Yeah. So in Q4, we had four deals for Red Hat total that were over $20 million. Uh, three of those had a very substantial OpenStack component. Mm -hmm. We've done a number of eight-figure standalone OpenStack deals. And again, they're big. Now, and I say they're big, they're eight-figure deals are, you know, pretty big for software companies, but what you see is these are typically small initial installs of what's likely to ripple out and be you know, 10X as big as those. So I think we have now three of the four major US telcos yep. have big eight-figure OpenStack relationships with Red Hat. And you know, those are just small, beyond proof of, proof of concepts, but those are small relative to where we think this could go. So it's already a, you know, a material revenue contrib uh, contributor for Red Hat. And you know, when you see where the, those environments are going, we expect to actually be quite large over the next couple of years. Yeah, the other thing, it seems that some of the fallout of distributions probably helps you, because I look at some of the infrastructure players that might have said, oh, I was going to have an OpenStack powered cloud you know, with our gear. Now it seems I hear a number of companies that you know, are using your OpenStack distribution inside that. Uh, do, do you see that as uh, something that's going to be, be yeah, rising your Yeah, I think that'll business? help us. You know, yeah. One of the benefits of, I think, Red Hat OpenStack is very similar to the benefits of Red Hat Linux, which is we can be the one certifier. So every piece of software certifies to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, every piece of hardware does, so you know you're going to get support. So where hardware touches software, having kind of a common element we think makes a lot of sense. And so when we looked at OpenStack, we said, well this is the same thing, it's where many various pieces of hardware touch many various pieces of software, it makes sense to have somebody who can kind of be that middle ground, so I'm making it up. If, if you're NetApp and you want to make sure that your products fit well in OpenStack, well you can get involved upstream and drive roadmaps, but in terms of technical support for a customer at 3 a.m., you probably want to make sure that you know exactly what's in the bits and they've all been tested together, and that's something Red Hat's uniquely good at. Which, you know, so for us selling to an enterprise, I think that's uh, part of our value proposition, but importantly, for any service provider or anyone else wanting to off offer an OpenStack service, to know that you're going to get support throughout the stack because we've done that certification. So, you know, we um, have a great relationship with Rackspace that offers Red Hat OpenStack platform, you know, uh, in a, as a managed service. And it's been really successful for us and I think for them as well, again, because they have capability of running it, but that whole ability to know the certifications kind of work and that we're doing that, I think it's a key source of value we try to contribute. Yeah. Um I'm curious, I think back you know, a decade or so ago, Red Hat usually is pulled along uh, by some you know, server vendor. That's where the Linux lived. When you know, I, I looked at everything at your summit, it's you know, Red Hat and Amazon, big partnership that you announced there, the relationship with Google, OpenStack. How much are you, your solutions tied to kind of the infrastructure layer underneath, and how much is it now that you know Red Hat? I have a relationship, I have a subscription. I'm looking at other solutions, and therefore you're you're, you're independent of uh, kind of the, the gear or cloud that I'm underneath. Well, I mean, I think that's one of our key value propositions. So when I talk to customers about Red Hat, you know, I say we try not to start open source projects. We get involved and we actually bring them in terms of life cycle products. But when we think about it, it's not just life cycle product. It's also we, we are opinionated about architecture that we think ultimately leads to choice for our customers. And so we've been kind of wonderfully lucky that so much innovation is happening in open source. So again, we're not just you know an operating system that looks like you know Unix, right? We have a whole portfolio of things coming out of open source. But when you think about well, how those apply to the enterprise, well, part of that is driving feature sets. So being able to run stateful applications in you know with Kubernetes, right? So we'll drive feature sets in. But it's also well, what's an architecture that works out well for an enterprise? Because an enterprise is going to have 
a traditional set of applications, they're almost for sure going to have a private cloud and they're almost for sure going to want to use public clouds, right? So we tried to work our whole architecture to say, how do you make the application abstracted so you can run it on Amazon, you can run it on premise, and you know, this relationship we did with Amazon was saying, well, Amazon's got great services, well what if you want to use their services but not use their cloud? Well now we're kind of making that possible. So we really are, in the same way Enterprise Linux abstracted you know, a SAP ERP from what server vendor ran underneath. We're trying to do that at, uh, for applications now at a layer up at kind of a, a infrastructure layer and making sure our infrastructure runs across the public clouds, you know, vSphere, OpenStack, you know, broadly. Jim, going back to the business for a second, as you know, uh, one of our themes here is kind of OpenStack past the hype cycle. What's real, what's happening, what's in real life right now. Uh, Red Hat has also been through its own hype cycles. As you talk to analysts, do you think people now understand both your business model and then maybe if you could speak to the open source ecosystems as a whole as you see small companies coming up. I mean, do you have any advice for them on how to start a, a you know, open source is obviously going to be a part of most small companies that start up these, startups these days. Uh, maybe do you have any advice on, on how they, they should be thinking about open source as a component of their operations and business model? Yeah, so I, I do think people are starting to get the Red Hat model. It took a long time, you know, because it's hard because we don't sell functionality, right? And so back you away and say, well, the functionality's free and we do, you know, life cycled and, you know, 10 year up to 13 year lives and all of that. You know, frankly, it sounds a little bit at times like you're selling life insurance and so that, but I always got to go, especially with startups say, you got to have a truly defined model and if you can't articulate it on a piece of paper really, really well about what you're going to do that's differentiated, that's where you get into the problem. And the problem, I think, and it's natural, it's not just in software, it's so many industries. You look and you say, here's a customer problem, let me go solve that. Well, of course you have to do that, and that's what the functionality does to, to a large extent. But because the functionality is free in, in, in open source software, to really dig underneath and say, okay, articulate a model beyond the functionality. There, I always use the example, I came from the airline industry. The airline industry has created enormous value for society in terms of letting people you know, visit loved ones and you know, commerce, et cetera. But as an industry, it, through its life, it's lost money for its shareholders, right? So it's not just about creating value, it's how you extract it. And so our model's a great one. I think you know, Hortonworks is following a similar model where you're saying, look, I'm going to have this package lifecycle purely open source product. There's as a service, which I continue to think is a great model. Right here in Boston, you know, I think uh, Acquia is a great example of taking Drupal and offering it as a service, and all of a sudden, bam, people are willing to pay for that. Is a great model. You know, I think jury's out on open core. You know, I hope anybody who's willing to give software to open source, I'm, uh, you know, happy to support them. And so, like MuleSoft uh, just went public; they had a really good quarter. So, I think we're seeing several models emerge that look like they may work. Jim, last question I have for you. What's the, what's the feedback you're getting from customers? How are they feeling kind of, you know, about cloud in general, you know, general macroeconomics maybe, uh, you know, fitting into their environment? Uh, most customers think pretty optimistic about where we are as an industry or, you know, any feedback you've gotten over the last week or so uh, well, talking I'm, to a lot of people. I mean, I'm going to answer that in two ways. Yeah. I, th I think most enterprises are scared to death of being Uberized. Yeah. Right, when you talk to banks, they're worried about PayPal's or you know, Venmo and, and that. You, know, you, you talk to the automakers, they're obviously worried about autonomous driving. You got a retail, it's Amazon. You can go category by category. So to some extent, I think there's this real fear. Now, bring that into the IT department, that's huge because you know, the only answer is IT enabled, you know, it's technology enabled, you know, becoming a technology company. So when you talk to IT, I think all of a sudden it's like, hey, I have a seat at the table in business the way I never did before. You know, IT used to be, you know, it's the factory, it's the back end, but now it's moving to the front of the shop. So I hear a ton of excitement, a ton of optimism. I think you felt it last week if you had a chance at Red Hat Summit, I think you see it here. It's like all of a sudden it's not back of the house, it's front of the house driving strategy. So I'd say for companies overall, they're scared to death, but what that means is enabling technology more and more and more in their enterprises, and that's, you know, great great time to be in technology. All right, well, Jim, appreciate you joining us once again in, uh, you know, second week in Boston. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from the Red Hat Summit, I'm sorry, OpenStack Summit. Uh, you know, uh, we were at Red Hat Summit last week. Uh, you're watching theCUBE. Thanks, great to be here.